Hello guys, we will study the C++ conditions and the if statement. This is the continuation of our C++ starter. So we will be using the if statement to uh, write our state, to write our program here. So this is very simple. All we have to do is to follow the instructions. So C++ supports the useful conditions from strings and mathematics uh, expression. So for example, we can use the following uh, math. Uh, logical uh, what you call this uh, symbols we can use the greater than symbol we can use the less than symbol greater than equal symbol equal symbol is not and then we have the not equal symbol so we just follow it and then uh, if you cannot get this statement well all you have to do is to repeat this video so for example we write a program we have the variable of x x equals to 10 and of course we compare the value of x to 10 so as usual the statement is very simple if x is greater than 10 then we print x is greater than 10 otherwise well of course We'll use another uh, alternative condition right here. As you can see, we have the open and close brace. So else is a serve word for the C++. And if the statement is not correct, automatically it will display x is less than or is equals to 10. And we put the inline. I suppose that you understand what is the inline. That is where you put the next statement to the next line, of course. Now, to arrange the program, we need to put the open and close braces as a groupings of different uh, 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 answers. No? So we have the first group, the second group. And uh, when we run the program, well, of course, we can automatically uh, um, see the output. So the output is x is less than or, is, or is, is equal to 10. Okay. Okay, so we have the completed the first task. And this time, we, we need to uh, use the alternative if in a statement. What if we have lots of conditions? What are you going to do with the statement? It's very simple. In using the if in a statement, you can use the single if close. And at the same time, you can use the double if close. <laughs> if you have a series of statements, then we can use the nested if. We can use the <coughs> inner if, the outer if at the same time. But of course, we can use that series of else if statements. So here, the value of x is equal to 10. At the same time, we compare the value of x to 10. If x is greater than 10, then of course, that is x is greater than, uh, greater than 10. After that, we have another condition right here. This is part now of the series of if statements. So if it's equal to 10, well, of course, it is very obvious that the value of x is equal to 10, then it will print, well, x is equal to 10. And uh, otherwise, if x is less than 10, it will print x is less than 10. If you uh, check the statement, you know, uh, don't be confused about the open and closed braces. It's just like you're creating the statement. It's about pairing, okay? Don't um, uh, lose your uh, eyesight in the uh, op uh, open and closed brace, okay? Now, in the last part of the if statement, we there is a missing uh, statement right here. We will be using what you call this, the else statement, to close the main if statement. Okay, how to do that? So after you have the series of else and if statement, all you have to do is to put the else statement after the last brace of your else if statement. So we will put else and an open statement, and then we will close it here. So we can just say, if there are errors or something happen inside the program, or if the statement is not in the program or it is, it is not in the list, we can say ops not in the list. And then we put here the end line statement. And after that, that's the time that you will put the return zero statement at the bottom. Okay. So we have to check our open and close braces, braces because one of the frail uh, frailties of this program is to uh, uh, check the open and close braces. I mean, the frailties of the students is to check the open and close braces. Okay. So... We will run our program. Let us check our program. Okay, if there are some errors right here, no, uh, you can spot where is the error. Okay, I think the error is right there. No, we missed to put the uh, the redirection symbol to our statement. That was a very uh, minor error. When we run the program, obviously the answer is x equals 10 because in the pre in at the top of the program, we have there the x equals 10 declaration. So in replacement of the if in else statement, there is another command. For example, if you want to create a series of conditions. So this is most likely a special uh, statement where you can uh, create the arrays of um, uh, if in a statement in your program. We'll be using the switch command. For example, we declare the variable of day. At the same time, we'll be using the switch. Switch is paired with the following switch case and break. And of course, we have the default. The purpose of the switch command here is to create the conditions for the variable day. If one, that is the equivalent of case. If one, case number one for the day, it will print what? It's Monday. Otherwise, okay, the purpose of the break is to proceed to the next statement. Otherwise, if two, that's this case two, is equivalent to if two, then display it's Tuesday. And of course, we have to uh, terminate the statement right there. 
Another thing is, if the statement is not correct, it will proceed to the next statement, and we close the switch statement. How to close that? The purpose of the default statement is to uh, close or to exit uh, in the program, or maybe we can say that if the list is not included in the previous um, selection, then we can say not in the list, sorry. So we have to uh, be careful with the open and close places because that's part of the syntax. And of course, don't forget to terminate it. So please check your open and close places. That, that's part of your computer grammar. So if you run the program, not in the list because we did not uh, assign a static value to our variable day one. Then for example, if you put there a static value of one, therefore the answer is, what is your guess? That's correct. It's Monday because one is part of the list. Case one equals Monday. Case two equals Tuesday. If we put two right there, the answer is Tuesday. Okay, because we have only one and two as part of the selection. Can you get the point? It's very easy. Now that you have learned how to use the if and else statement, um, well, do not push yourself. Um, just uh, follow the basic instruction. And of course, you have a short stint experience how to use the speech statement command. For example, no, um, in the previous topic of our C++ starter, we introduced how to use the loop. Okay, using the for loop. For the for loop, we have the instructions there. We have the three group of statements, right? That and three parameters. The first param the first statement is for the in uh, initialization. The second statement is for the condition, and the third one is for the incrementation. So that is the for loop. In our case, we will put the loop statement inside our case statement. If we choose case number one, it will print Monday at the same time. It will count from one to ten. So we will be introducing the break command. That is one of your um, C++ serve word. What is a break command? Break command will stop at the moment it meets the criteria of the condition. For example, you count from 1 to 10, and if you create the condition of the value i here, if i is equals to 4, automatically you infuse the reserve word of break command. So what will happen? So it will count from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, but again it will not continue. So the reverse statement for the break command is to use the continue command. If you put the continue command, it will count from 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. All you have to do is to modify the break command to a continue command. So in this case, we have this uh, combination of statements. No? Uh, this is uh, the purpose of the C++ starter. You can assemble your statement inside the statement and inside the functions. Because if you follow the previous uh, instructions and uh, you know the basic tutorial in our previous lesson well of course you can play with the statements using the if in a statement using the other statement and especially using the loops command statement so here uh, we have the conditions of uh, the break command if i equals to four it will break this otherwise we close the statement by using the close brace statement and then we print the value of it's monday so um Right here, we have another statement at the bottom. We did not erase that so that you can have a clear, clearer view how to uh, combine these commands. So we have the value of 1 to the, our day variable. So when we run the program, we well, of course expected that we have the error right here because we have the wrong spelling, count i. So we need to erase the i. That is a wrong grammar, of course. No, That is very uh, obvious. When we run the program, it will count from what? It's Monday. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. So, the missing uh, output right here is we forgot to put the value of i. So, i will determine if the counts of the statements. So, with the value of loop is, of course, we infuse the variable of i because i was used in the previous statement at the top of the program. We initialize it, we compare it the value of i to 10, and then we increment the value of i. Once we meet the breakpoint, automatically it stops at number 4. Okay, so all you have to do is to... Uh, Review. Okay, we will write our simple application here uh, using the C++, of course. And uh, this time, we will uh, combine another statement to create our own mini app. Okay, this is a very simple program. We need to create our own functions. I, I don't know if you can still recall uh, how to write the functions in our previous C++ starter. Whereas a function is just like a small snippet, a small code that can be used inside the program. So here we create a function name as underscore day. So we have here the first parameter that is x. The value of that is to return the value to the main program. So the purpose of this um, uh, function is to ask the user to input the number of days from one to seven, okay? So we have only two lists in our main program, one and two, that is Monday and Tuesday. 
So to start with our program, you need to um, ask first the user to enter a number. Remember, this is a function, okay? This is not part of the main program, but we need to invoke this function because a writing function that's, you know, a unique part of, um, you know, uh, ex expressing yourselves, no? Um, just like you're composing a music. Now we have here the input command, we have the value of x. So we return the value of x in, in the main program, okay? So that's the purpose of that value. So x is part of the parameter of our as underscore day um, function. In the main program, we declare, of course, the variables. Okay. So, uh, you know, I'll give you some idea how to write this thing and how to call this program. So, why we declare the choice variable? The purpose of that is to reference that to the next variable. So, choice is a variable. You can write your own variable. You can replace your own variable. Okay. Uh, this is part of, uh, you know, a programming discussion. So choice was to ask underscore day and we have the num. So the num now is part of the value of x, wherein we reference the choice. And of course, we invoke the num. Num is the rep 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 representations of the parameter of the x value at the top of the program. Okay. Do you think that this statement is correct? Well, of course, let us, you know, modify this statement. You see, we need to match this statement at the top of the program. When we run the program, we have the error. If you can spot the error, well, of course, you're improving in this session. So what are we going to do? We need to tweak it and we need to replace our variable, okay? This is to match our variable to the input command. So day is part of our switch command, okay? That's part of the selection process. So we again, what you call this, use the num1 as to reference to the uh, value of x at the top of the program. That is the representation of x, okay? Okay, it seems that x is the parent and num is the child referencing to the x as mother statement, as mother parameter. Now, when we run the program, of course, we have the uh, output, okay? You can see the output there. We have only the two selections uh, there. We have one and two. Again, we when we put number one as input, okay, one, input, one, input. So, we will, it will count from one, two, three, four, okay? That's the process. Don't forget to review this uh, lesson. And if you cannot uh, unravel the problem, and if you have a hard time really to um, crunch the problem, all you have to do is to repeat the video. And of course, please don't forget to invite your friends to watch this video. Please don't forget also to um, like, share, and subscribe. And um, you can go over with my previous video, okay? Always remember that uh, programming is uh, easy and uh, difficult. It's just like a hot and cold type of process. So, always remember that patience is a virtue. Thank you so much and have a nice day.